Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to The Dyslexic Reader and today I'm going to be doing my TBR for Nonfiction November. As you know, if you are a regular watcher of this channel, I don't really do TBRs unless it's for readathons and this month I have chosen to participate in Nonfiction November, which is the readathon, just to try and read more non-fiction than you normally do. Non-fiction November is hosted by Olive over at A Book Olive and Gemma at Non-Fiction Books. I'll try and link both their channels down below. Um, they've done this for a number of years but this is the first year that I'll be participating. If you watch the channel then you will know that I try to read one non-fiction a month. I don't always achieve it but that's what I try. In October, my non-fiction for the month was Helter Skelter, which was the true account of the Manson murders. And that's normally just what I do. One a month, sometimes I don't get it, sometimes I do. And that's it. So for non-fiction November, which main goal is just to read more, I've decided to pick two books to read. But there are four challenges. I have managed to get two books that link extremely tenuously at the best to the four challenges so we'll all have a good laugh together at how loosely linked these are but I don't care it's two non-fiction books that I'm interested in and the goal is to read more so I will be reading more. Now for the challenge the four challenges they're not as much pure challenges as in words and you can interpret the words however you want to. So it's really open and the words are home, substance, love and scholarship. The first book I had, I've had this on the loan from the library for a while, I wasn't interested in it, I was going to return it but then I reckon it fit so well into this that I'm going to keep it and I am going to have a go at it this month which is The Secret Teacher, no author noted. This is a memoir of a teacher and it's called The Secret Teacher because the author is unknown for whatever reason. So it's, yeah, it's about a teacher and it's just like a memoir, all the names and all have obviously been changed. So it is a real life memoir of a teacher, we just don't know who. And for this satisfies scholarship because obviously it's about learning and teaching and the school environment and the education system. And it also occupies love because teaching is my chosen profession. It's what I love to do. They're the better of the four links. So next one's a doozy. I was at the library and I was thinking, Hannah, you have to pick out a nonfiction book that's going to satisfy home and substance. Which was, a, was not easy. And I was just looking through the books and this one really caught my eye. This is Badgerlands by Patrick Barkham and it is a non-fiction book about badgers. So I thought, hmm, how can we possibly work this in? Well, one substance. It's about badgers and their environment, which is made out of substances. They live in dirt holes and dirt is a substance. It involves substances, okay? The badgers interact with substances. They need water to live. Water is a substance. I'm sure water will be mentioned in this book and how they get water and such. Substance. And then I thought, home. I'm a Hufflepuff, so my house symbol is a badger. Home. <laughs> Laugh at me all you want. I'm laughing with you. So these are the two books I'm going to try and read in November to fulfill the four challenges of non-fiction November. I would urge you to participate. It's not too late. You don't have to have a YouTube channel. You don't have to do all four challenges. You can just read one book. It doesn't matter. But um, I was having a discussion with my boyfriend tonight. I was reading um, the first couple of pages of this and I was telling him how it was more set out like short stories about badgers and then what people have learned from these experiences. So if a badger became domesticated 
by some old woman in the countryside and how she lived with the badger and maybe healed it because it had a broken leg. What can be learned from that story? Maybe what badgers eat, etc. And that is like a really good way, I think, of getting information across. And I think people think that nonfiction is dry and that nonfiction is like textbooks or reference books. And that's due to experiences I've had in school. But really go to your local library and look at the nonfiction section. Like this is told almost in short stories and the writing is absolutely beautiful. Like it's really well done. Like it's really immersive and I don't feel like I'm reading nonfiction at all and I'm only the first chapter in which is 15 pages and I've already learned loads of things about badgers that I didn't know. So I would love if you are participating to comment down below what you're reading or if you've made a blog post or a video about it to link it as well because I just love to see what everyone's reading and I think it really gives me enthusiasm and just boosts the whole community. That is us for today. I am thinking of possibly for our Sunday video, my novelty chats, which is normally a discussion. Um, I don't have any discussions in mind. So if you would like to comment a discussion that you would like me to look into and talk about, feel free to do that. And if I can't think of anything, I might just do my September wrap up and make it sort of a chatty wrap up if I can't think of a topic to talk about. Which is unlike me, but this this week the inspiration is not coming. So that's us for today. I hope you're all happy. I hope you're all healthy. And I will hopefully see you in my next video. Goodbye.